Hey everyone, and welcome to Almost Cancelled. I'm Peter, that is Connor, and we are going to talk about Legends of Tomorrow. Oh no, wait, no, we're not. We're going to talk about Timeless Season 1, Episode 1. It's simply called The Pilot. Uh, because the first episode will start off spoiler free. Now, I cracked a joke there, because the plot of this is very reminiscent of DC's Legends of Tomorrow, specifically Season 1. Yeah, it's it's just missing some superheroics, and that's about it. It pretty much is. Down to the fact that they're hunting a specific villain throughout time. Yeah. Reminds me a lot of that show. However, though, Legends of Tomorrow, as the season went on, really, like, nosedived in quality. So this is a chance to show them how it's done. But this didn't start as strongly as Legends did either. It didn't, but I'll take a show that starts a little bit weaker. And it gets better. Gets I will better. too. Uh because I'll say, I, did, I think I enjoyed it. I you know I, I think there was enough in there that I liked. Yeah. Um, it definitely had that rushed pilot feel. That said, I do think as a pilot it did a very good job of setting up what the show is going to be and I know going forward what to expect oh, from yeah. like some recent pilots. Absolutely. I, but I do think this should have been a double. I think this should have been a two-hour pilot because I could not believe the, where we were in the runtime when they went into that ship. It, yeah. it it wasn't even ten minutes in. Like, I couldn't believe it. How quickly this because none of these characters. Oh, well, one of them does. Uh, uh, Rufus, who's the uh, one of the sort of the programmer engineer dudes who works on it, uh, who's black, which is important because they're going into the past and he gets treated differently in the past. Uh, he he obviously is familiar with it, but the other two, like you know, uh, Wyatt's a soldier. He's in like a marine or I can't remember his exact what branch of the military he came from, but he, you know, he's a, he's there because of his uh, skills like that. Whereas Lucy, our female character, is there because she's a historian and understands all these time periods and she'll know how to speak to people, what they should be wearing. She even criticises the, the, you know, the, the period piece outfit that they've gotten for her. Mm. Uh, which made me wonder, actually, just how good the researchers are for this show. Because it's one thing for it to be out a little bit, because we wouldn't notice and we wouldn't care. Yeah, but she's she's specifically saying, "Oh no, this this blouse is from like ten years later." And yeah, I'm, saying like the, the fabric wasn't yeah. even used back then. And I'm wondering just how good the research is, is because not only did they have to get the time period right, they also have to get her corrections right. <laughs> yeah, it's so, a lot of work. There's a lot of work. I I do not envy the job on that show of uh, like all the fact checking and you know, you, you know like you know how like she's been hired as like the consultant historian. Mm. This show has hired so many consultant historians. <laughs> Yeah, that's good. That's a good point. Actually, they've hired like ten of her in a building yeah. somewhere just to sit and like you know fat crunch and <laughs> yeah. make sure everything's accurate. Well, I'm assuming that is the case. I mean, an actual historian might come out and tell us that this is all baloney. I don't know. Yeah, they could be making it all up, and that's not unheard of. It's but not I unheard think the of. fact that they've got a historian character and they're making corrections mean they have to be a touch more accurate. Yeah, because the minute someone finds them out, they're going to be like nothing but abuse is going to happen. Yeah, I mean they can fudge some things, sure. Like no one's going to complain if they, you know, take some you know dramatic license here or there. But yeah, so the plot of this show—I should mention that actually. I really should have started with that. So the plot of this show is that these three characters are brought together to hunt this villain who has stole the this time machine and is going back to various points of time to affect history. And they've assembled this team of three people. Why three people? Because that's the amount that the ship can fit. We can't have any more than three. It's a fine reason as any. Yeah. And they... So in this episode, in the pilot episode, uh, they go back to 1937 to the Hindenburg disaster and it's all about... It all revolves, revolves around that. Um, but like I say, my main complaint with the episode was really that it just felt really rushed in a lot of places. I thought some parts of exposition, which I won't uh, divulge before spoilers, uh, came off as a little bit more cornered than I felt they needed to be because they were trying to get to them so quick. Yeah. But it, that is true, but it's a common pilot problem that we it, see all the time. It is, it is. I, I, I obviously love science fiction. I do like time travel. Uh, I like time travel stories. Um, so I'm, I'm all, and I, I even happen to like the movie Time Cop. And this is essentially a kind of weird new version of Time Cop, in a sense. Uh, it's just not as standard as Time Cop was, where they had like a whole precinct of people going back and doing it individually. But it's a lot of these similar ideas that we've seen before. Um, and they set up some ongoing mysteries, which are already playing a little bit with the time travel elements. And no, it, it it was a bit rushed. It was a bit cheesy in places. Uh, 
but specifically the character of Wyatt and his backstory, I feel like every time they, he brought that up, it felt kind of forced. Yeah, because it's just like, oh, well, obviously. Like, the, the way they were playing it. But that said, I did I did kind of enjoy the, the general premise, and I thought the three, three actors... Uh, Wyatt was probably the weakest of the three, but I think it's just because his character was the least interesting. Yeah, he didn't really have much to do outside of soldiery things. Yeah. Uh, I think... Uh, Malcolm Barrett, who plays Rufus, is doing a, quite a good job. I quite like that character because I feel like he's not—he's so far away from your stereotypical black man. Mm. You know, like you know, as, as for what movies and TV have as the stereotypical black guy on the show, I feel like he's very different from that. And I think because of that, his commentary and his like reacting to how he would be treated in the past in this episode actually works really well. That said, I really like that the show does address the that stuff in the past because yeah. a lot of time travel stuff shows you know in the past they just kind of ignore it and they kind of just brush it under the rug and they, it, no, it's always a little bit glaring it's always one or two things they, they either ignore it and it's weird or they lean on it so much that it feels like they're, they're really trying to like give you like some sort of big grand message which don't get me wrong nothing wrong with that message but it, it stops being entertainment and starts being it makes the show itself suffer yeah yeah uh, whereas here I thought they did a good job because they set it up right at the start that he's he's like no I don't want to go back Are you kidding me I'm black in the 1930s <laughs> like you know yeah. right aware he's aware this is going to be an issue and he's concerned about it and it comes up in the natural places where it should come up for the most part yeah getting on the bus getting on the bus yeah and they sit in the back uh, you know just simple little things like that and they don't necessarily dwell on it too much but they give it enough that there is a moment in this where he he kind of stands up to a white person who's being racist, and it is quite fulfilling, just yeah. hearing him, you know, rattle off the his little speech. It's because uh, we because everything he says we know is true, you yeah. Because we are. From I, I believe this speech was actually in the trailer anyway. It was, but that it was the extended five minute like pilot oh, season trailer, it was a and the long one. And, and I feel sure. like, I feel like it's. I feel like we shouldn't spoil stuff that just because it was in no, that five no, minute no. trailer. I, I I thought it was in a shorter trailer, yeah. but okay. Bits of it might have been, but I just I remember that five minute you know uh, upfront trailer that you always get for pilots where they spoil the entire thing. It does cover literally the entire first episode. It does. Uh, Patty Spivet from the Flash was in this episode. She was a reporter in 1937. Down for that. Yeah, yeah. I bet you missed her on the Flash. Yeah. Um, anything else you would like to say before we get to uh, spoilers? Uh, my one concern going forward is it could be a bit procedural. Just oh. Mm. Here's the thing this week. I think it will be to an extent to start with, but they've already set up an ongoing plot. An yeah, ongoing I just mystery. hope it leads on that enough, soon enough, that it becomes sort of like that, rather than just, you know, each week it's just a different thing. I'm not worried about them doing it too quickly, because this is a network show, and for me, I can think of several shows that I love that were, you know, it, they, they built the overall plot a little bit here and there. Yeah. episode to episode but it wasn't until maybe like the end of season two season three where it went on full serialized where like there was the, a point of no return where it was like okay we can't focus on anything yeah, else yeah and that's fine it's just like give you've got to give me enough each week that it's leaning into this now i think i'm sure they will but the good thing is is because they are targeting the person what the same person each time it's not like they're doing doing a case of the week sure the time period will feel a little bit like that but I have a a little bit of a, a question. So they go obviously they, they go back to stop this guy, right? Mm -hmm. That's the whole point. Why don't they just go back an hour before him and just wait where he's and then go right? He's here because they don't. Well, they set this up. They say they don't know where they go. They know when they go, but they don't know the, the exact location. But they go back a day before then, and then you can just kind of wait in the area what and go a, right. He's got to come here. They don't even know what country they're in though. Yeah, they do. They've got to. If they go into the Hindenburg and they know that that's where he's gone and they go to there, they can't be that far off. No, because they had evidence to suggest that. Yeah, but... They, they found something that told them that that's where he went, not, like... No, I know, but that's what I mean. They know he went there, and they, but they said didn't they say something specific, like, four hours before is where he went? Yeah, they, they, they know exactly when. They can pinpoint to the minute when they go. But they yeah. don't know where. The only reason why they knew it was in the same city as the Hindenburg is because they had evidence that was r unrelated to their science. Right. right, but what I mean is why don't they just go back to the city like a day before, set up at the place ready, rather than being chasing from behind. All oh, right, you mean just in this episode, not ongoing? Yeah. Right. 
Um, I don't know. I don't know. Like they cover why not just go back just before he stole the ship. Fine. But this one, like, I don't know. There might be a reason for that. I don't know. Maybe that's the first plot hole. It's time travel. There's going to be plot holes. There is, but they address the other one, so I feel like it's a fair criticism if they're not going to address this one. Um, I, I guess my argument would be that, yeah, they don't know the exact location. They know that that's his target, right? Yeah. Other than that, though, like they know when he gets there. I feel like they want to limit the amount of time they spend in the past because they do talk a lot about how they don't want to affect anything. Mm. In fact, the whole point of uh, Lucy going there is that she's there to make them fly under the radar. So I feel like the more time they spend in the past, the more likely that they're going to affect things. Okay, that's fair. There you go. I've, uh, I've answered that for you. All right, then. From this point on, we're going to full spoilers for the episode. So uh, point of no return if you, uh, you know, want, uh, want to go in spoiler free. So I will say uh, <laughs> I... I both appreciated and did not appreciate the uh, the wink wink line near the start when uh, someone said to Lucy, "You can uh, make your own future." Yeah, that, I mean that's fair. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so they go back, and I knew not Patty Spivett was going to die because a she's in the past, b the setup that she's going to die, and c I'm expecting her back in the Flash, and she can't be doing that if she's a regular on this. So d we saw her get shot in the in that extended trailer. Aye, but that could have been before the time of that stuff happened. Yeah, that's true. You know, we are dealing with time travel, you know, things can be altered and so on. Uh, actually, I mentioned Time Cup. One of the rules they bring up is that they can't uh, like go to a time where they're already there, and that's kind of similar to a rule from Time Cup. Mm. So, it's a pretty common rule. I feel like that'll, uh, they'll find a way around that, though, at some point, because I think it's far too tempting to, to, at some point, have the characters like see other versions of themselves. Yeah, they'll have to break it for a reason. Like they'll have to like, oh, we're gonna risk it. Yeah, it'll, it'll, get, it'll get dangerous. I will say, I like the like the villain took the main ship, and they've got this dinky like prototype version. Yeah, it's it's much more interesting because obviously theirs is presumably less good. Hi, worse is the word. Yeah. Yeah, but I, you know, I'm, <laughs> I'm going. I'm going really specific here. It's less good. Okay. Uh... Obviously, the big stuff here, more than anything else, is the the ending. Uh, so they they come back, and obviously the villain saved the Hindenburg because he wanted to blow it up, leaving instead because all these important people were going to be on there, uh, and they they come to the conclusion that he's essentially tried to destroy the U.S. like in its earlier days, you know, when it was easier to target. Yeah, yeah. but you know, so all these people, you know, uh, I think one invented a helicopter one uh, set up the UN you know there was a bunch of like, important people going on the on the flight and because it didn't blow up now till the next day and it blew up from a different reason it's affected a bunch of stuff and they come back to the present and they say that and all the characters who sent them there you know uh, uh, Mason who's the head of this company who built this thing like to all of them this was always the case now like, as far as they're concerned, this has always went down this way now when they come back. Yeah. And it's only these characters who have went through time that remember the original timeline. Yeah, I'm uh, down for those rules. Oh, yeah, I, I like those rules too. Um, but the, obviously the more important effect, though, is that we, we see that Lucy's family's changed. Her mother is no longer dying, I think, of cancer. I'm, I'm kind of just guessing there, but it seemed like cancer. She looked like she was in like a coma or something, yeah. maybe. Uh, but she's now up and around, she's fine, and her sister doesn't exist. She's vanished from the face of the earth and she's engaged yeah <laughs> which is funny I, I always chuckle a little bit when these time travel rules mean that the characters now live the life that they don't remember but they remember their original life mm. I hope they uh, kind of explain what it was that changed things what, what's, what it was that affected it this much like because mm. you, you'd think the Hindenburg incident was so far unrelated to her life and obviously when we were back at the uh, the company with uh, Mason it all looked fine pretty much as we left it it seemed yeah it seemed the same uh, I mean obviously there's the butterfly effect where it just sort of has a knock on thing like because these 36 people who were supposed to die lived you know one of them accidentally you know trips somewhere which stops someone from meeting someone else that yeah. you know you know there's, there's a whole chain reaction that can get there it is kind of weird how it specifically still led to her mother and her 
but not her sister. Yeah, it's just the sort of thing where I'm interested to see if they answer what it was that changed these specific things, because presumably she's going to want to change it back. Yeah, which would lead me to think, though, that the thing that it's affected is her father, because maybe if she's the older sister, then she was born, and then something, you know, in- yeah. intervened with her dad to stop the sister from being born. How that helps her stops her mother from getting sick? I don't know. Maybe medicine is better because of people who survived. Maybe there was a scientist on board who cured yeah. whatever she had. You know, I'm I'm just spitballing. Yeah, no, no, that's fair. I just I, I hope that they because she's presumably going to want her original life back. She is, but she'll have to give up her healthy mother to do it. She will, but. You, you can still see that's the dilemma that's going to go I feel go like through. tomorrow when we're talking about The Flash, we're going to be talking about a lot of similar things. We really are. <laughs> Especially that last one. Especially that last bit, yeah. Uh, uh, but this was okay. That, this was this was enjoyable enough. A little rough around the edges, a little network TV suite, but I think there's a promise, promise there. Yeah. yeah, there's some promise there. It wasn't as cheesy as the trailer made me believe it would be. Mm. So that's good. I like that. So, yeah, that's Timeless. Uh, let us know what you thought of that pilot in the comments below. Uh, like and subscribe and all that stuff. Helps us out a lot. Get us on Twitter at mailed underscore fuzz. Uh, but that's it, guys. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.